Hi everybody and welcome to the fourth tutorial for the National Disney Princess Week. And today I'm going to be doing a tutorial based on Ariel, the Little Mermaid. Uh, she's the next princess after Aurora, technically. Well, technically there's Princess a Long Way, but uh, for the classic Disney princess look, um, this is what we're going to be doing. And I'm really, really excited to do this one because this is the only one that I actually have um, parts of the real makeup that Ariel likes to wear at the parks. So this is going to be as authentic as what she likes to wear as any of my other tutorials. Um, so definitely stay tuned. Um, I'm going to just do, I already did one eye like I normally do and I already did my regular uh, moisturizing primer and foundation. Um, so we're going to start off with blush. Uh, the first thing is this blush, which is what she actually uses at the park. Um, I happen to have a pretty good inside with that. I'm really good friends with Ariel. Uh, so it's by a product or a company called Lay Femme. Um, the wonderful thing about Lay Femme, they are a stage makeup. But the nice thing about them is, is when you buy them retail, they're really, really cheap. <laughs> Which sounds like, oh, cheap makeup is bad makeup, not this stuff. So what she likes to use on her cheeks is called Peach Sparkle. Now, if you can't get uh, Le Femme, you can find it online, which is easier mm -hmm. if you don't live in an area such as L.A. Uh, it, But any peach colored cheek and blush is the perfect for her. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this on our apples of our cheeks. I have one of my favorite thing in a bobs my friend got me. Um, it's a mirror, but it, she put this in the, uh, where you're supposed to put a picture. So I'm gonna use this today for her. And the lighting I have, it's a really uh, stormy day out, so you're not getting a lot of lighting, but uh, it is actually quite pigmented, but what I always like to do is I do my blush and then if I feel after I get all my makeup done that my blush is still not bright enough, I go back in. It just warms up the cheeks really nice. And then I'm going to use my Benefit 10 Contour and Highlight Box. But I am going to contour like I do with Cinderella and Snow White where I'm just going to do it to about halfway through my cheek. You can actually kind of see the pocket where I actually have a cheekbone, which helps a lot. And I'm going to bring up a little bit on the temples. And then, of course, I'm going to blend it out. And then sometimes again I go in and I give it a little bit more of a highlight here. And let's go over that real quickly with the blush again. I always forget which side I have my pink and which side I have my, my, my coral. Okay, so now on ooh, I forget. now on to the eyes. Um, there are two products that she likes to use, and then I'm going to uh, put on the rest that's my own. Again, I'm going to start off with the Benefit Tattletale Cream Eyeshadow.
And that's going to go all over the lid and up to the brow bone. Make sure you get it in your tear duct so it brightens up your eyes a little bit. Ariel was drawn with huge eyes. Um, I, I kind of going back and looking over uh, the three princesses after 89, and um, which are like the three next ones, which would be Ariel, Belle, and Jasmine. And I noticed that their eyes, all three of their eyes are drawn quite large in a ratio to their face. And then if you go back and look at the older ones, uh, Snow White, Cinderella, and Aurora, they're their eyes are drawn a lot smaller in the ratio of their face, so I think that's kind of funny to to see the differences and um, animation and, and beauty um, in the eras. So we want Ariel to have big eyes, big eyes as you can get. Uh, so if you put it in the tear duct, it's going to brighten up your eye. Okay, so this product next we're going to use is probably my favorite product. It is a really hard color to find if you don't find if you don't buy lay femme um i used to look all over the place before i found out that you could buy lay femme <laughs> in the real world uh and this you use on your eyebrows and on your lid so it is a product like this it's called rust and it picks up kind of orange in this but it, it is an orange but it literally looks like a brown red copper color. It is highly pigmented. Be aware of that because when you first put it on it's like yeah. especially if you have uh, lighter color eyes it, it looks like you have um, an eye infection <laughs> if you do it too much because that's what it looked like with me and I put it on my friend uh, when she was Ariel and um, it she has bluer eyes than I like aqua eyes and if once you get it all done it looks a lot better, but just know that in the very beginning, it looks kind of like you look kind of ill. <laughs> so it's called Rust. It looks like this. Do I even have the price still on this? I think it was $4. $4. And I've used it a lot, and I've had this for a very long time. So it's definitely a good buy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a flat eyeshadow brush. And what I do is I literally pat it. Um... I pat it on because it's like as you can tell it's super pigmented and what you want to do is you only want to get this on your lid so make a very almond shape oh I almost put it in the wrong spot And then with the remaining, um, sometimes I bring it down a little bit down here just to give it a little bit more of an opening, but we're actually going to use a separate color for the bottom part. And so for the, the brow bone part, this is the other color that is essential to a perfect aerial. It is, it, it's in a different packaging, but it's still the same um, eyeshadows uh, for Le Femme, and it's called Clove. It's actually quite a gorgeous color. It's more on the reddish side of a brown, but it has little specks of gold in it, which is really beautiful. They also use this on Belle, just in different ways. So you're gonna take a blending brush like this, and you're gonna just, you can tell I've used a lot of this. Um, when I was a real redhead, uh, I used this a lot more when I went a darker red than this color, when I was like a, a dark auburn. I use this on my eyes and on my eyebrows, but that was two years ago and I still have it and it's still really full. So you want to take it on your brush and you just want to do your the crease. It's a slightly different color than the rust, um, but together they look really similar alone. They look a lot different. You can kind of see the difference. And then again, I'm going to kind of take it a little bit down. Only halfway like I like to do. 
And then I don't have the third, I should have gotten it, but I don't have the third color. But the third color is a Le Femme uh, eyeshadow and it's in the color called Beach. And what you want to do is you want to put that all the way over up to your eyebrow bone and you want to blend that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a combination of two things. I'm going to use a combination of my highbrow and I'm going to use my favorite Bare Minerals Nude Beach Loose Powder. And that's how I'm going to complete the look. So we're going to put highbrow up here on the top, on, right underneath your eyebrows. I have tendrils falling. And blend that in. I'm going to take the loose powder with a fluffy eyeshadow brush. Only put a tad bit in and tap it. So then what we're going to do, oh, this hair just doesn't want to stay. We're going to put that over top of where we put the highbrow and we're going to blend, blend the contour. See how that toned it down just a little bit? You still had the color, but it's not so um, spaced in there. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do the eyebrows. And what we're going to do use with, for the eyebrows is we're going to use the rust color again. And we're going to use an angled eyeshadow brush, or eyebrow brush, excuse me. I'm gonna put a little bit in here. And you're going to follow the natural part of your eyebrows. Ariel's eyebrows should be a little larger. They are drawn thin at times, but the idea of getting the bigger eyes, the more younger, youthful eyes, we wanna do a fuller brow, not a big brow, but a fuller brow. So I just followed my natural eyebrows. And again, this is highly pigmented, so take your time. <laughs> My wig. I highly recommend brushing through it, just it softens up the brow. But here's the brow. And this is the same color as this down here. Isn't that crazy? There, you got your eyebrows on, which I think are super essential. So even when you're a redhead, um, a, either a natural one or one that you color your hair, uh, I really find that these two colors work in general for a makeup look for a redhead. Um, especially for eyebrows. I feel like you really need to color in your eyebrows for being a redhead. It just makes it more natural and it just, I think, actually softens the harshness. Because I actually had hair color exactly like this. I dyed my hair exactly like this color. And with I, I wow, my twang just came in. Without eyebrows, <laughs> um, it it just, I think it makes the color harder on your face. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a liquid eyeliner and we're going to just do as thin of a line as we can. No wing at the end, just a thin line on the natural lash line. Let's see if I can do this. A little mirror. And again, I'm using my favorite eyeliner from Japan but any eyeliner with a nice thin brush will work Now I'm going to do the white eyeliner and this is again is the Urban Decay 24-7. Excuse my nails by the way. I'm trying to get them off 
without using nail polish remover. It's not working very well. So we're going to put this in the tear ducts of our eyes and then we're going to bring it over to where we stopped our other eye liner. It opens up the eye and makes them look more youthful. And now for lashes. I'm actually going to be using lashes from Japan. Um, these are Dolly Wink in number two, Sweet Girly. And the reason why I love these is because of the shape of them. I'm going to try to see if I can show you a picture. You see how the shape of them has the thicker uh, lashes in the middle? That actually creates more of a rounder shape in the eye, which makes the eyes look larger, which is what I'm trying to accomplish with Ariel. I have to say that I love these lashes. I love Japanese lashes. And I'll tell you why. It's because um, I find that they make them with a thinner, the majority of them, make them with a very thin lash line. And they're actually, some of them are clear. And I feel with the smaller of the lash line, um, the more natural they look and the easier they place on there. I just bought Benefit lashes and they're beautiful. I'm actually going to use them for Belle. They're called pinup lashes. But the one thing I have to say about them is that the, the actual band on them is so thick. And it's actually kind of uncomfortable to wear because of that. So I'm just gonna curl my lashes and put the mascara on. Actually, I should probably do that while I let my lashes dry. These are, if you're going to buy these, um, you can get these lashes online at a Circle Lenses store called Pinky Paradise. I'll put a link below. And, uh, or I was lucky enough, since I live in LA, that there are stores at some of the local malls called Tokyo Lifestyle, and some of them actually sell the product. If you can find them, I highly recommend them. The one thing is though that they are a tad bit longer because they are meant for the Galio Lolita large eye look where you bring your uh, liner down lower. So if you need to cut them, those are definitely ones that if you don't want to do that look and your eyes, no one's eyes are that long um, or that big. Definitely recommend cutting them. So I always curl my lashes before I apply my falsies and I always put on one or two coats of a volumizing mascara. Volumizing or anything that actually grabs all the lashes. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this on screen. Let's see how well we do this. So I'm gonna put the lashes on. I always just try to set, set them down. And voila. These are actually extremely easy to get on. <laughs> They're like the easiest lashes I've ever placed on my eye. And I think it's because of how thin and how flexible the band is. Okay, so I'm gonna set those on there. And while that dries, I'm going to do and talk about lipstick. Now lipstick, what Ariel loves to wear in the park, but I unfortunately don't have any more, is a Le Femme lipstick called Terracotta. If you find anything with that name on it, I'm going to assume it's going to be about the same coloring and it is a brown copper red color. Uh, they used to have the lipstick, but the lipstick is actually discontinued, but they do have the lip liner and you can fill in your lips with the lip liner and then put maybe a gloss over top of it or you can use a color that's close to it. Um, I found a color that is extremely close to it and it was one of my favorite, favorite lipsticks to wear when I was a redhead. Um, it is by a, it's a little expensive brand. It's called Shatakai. Uh, if anyone 
remembers prescriptives. It's the same woman that actually created prescriptives and she sold it and started making her own company based more on botanicals and rose water ingredients. And I have to say it's probably one of the best makeups in general, makeup uh, on retail makeup. Um, it is, again, a little expensive, but their foundations, their eyeshadows, their blushes, their lipsticks, their skincare is amazing. It's amazing. And every one of them is actually has rose water in it. And you can smell it, like pure rose water. Uh, so this is the color here that I like to use. As you can tell, it's a brown red. I also have a color that I sometimes use, which I might use for Belle for her evening is by Estee Lauder. It's called Autumn. So anything that's autumn, amber, uh, terracotta, um, uh, what was that? Ad not Adobe. There was one from Estee Lauder that was perfect too. Um, I, can't, I think it was like Adobe brick. Sometimes anything that says brick on them is too red, so definitely look and see if it has more of a copper look to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. And you can tell, you can see how red lip, or the lip really makes the look. So there's the lipstick. As you can see, it definitely blends in with the colors that we've decided to choose for the makeup. And now I'm going to use my falsies amplified to mix in my eyelashes now that my glue is dried. and put it on the lower lashes. That's very important, I sometimes forget my lower lashes. And squeeze the lashes to it. As you can see, it makes this very big, uh, round doe eye look, which is perfect, I feel, for Ariel. So if you can't get the Japanese lashes, I really recommend getting something that does have more of a middle thickness to the lash. Um, you can even use the Wispies that I used for Aurora and for Cinderella. I used to use those a lot. Um, not Try not to, try to stay away from thicker lashes. Um, try to do more of a natural lash, but volume. You can also use the individual lashes that you can glue on individually and you can do more of a cluster in the middle. So this is basically it. There's not much to her. Um, so again, you want to use a peach-like blush and if you want to use the exact one she loves to use, it's called Peach Sparkle by Le Femme. Um, a contour and highlight. For the eyes, use a base. Try to use something more of the sandy color. And then you want to use the Le Femme product Rust or anything in this sort of color. You can also use that on your eyebrows. And then in the brow bone, you use the color Clove by Le Femme. And then Beach, if you can get beach all over and blend that in and that's basically it. Uh, there's also a way to do the eyes that you can do. When King Triton likes to give Ariel her tail, she sometimes uses this as a lighter um, look. And all it is, it's very simple, all it is is that color beach all over the eye and then 
rust, the color rust, in the brow bone. And that's it. It's two colors. It works really well. It's a little more of a lighter look than this. But um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know some people have been saying they've been looking forward to Ariel. Uh, Ariel is possibly my favorite. Uh, I have a really hard time picking, but Ariel is definitely uh, my was my favorite. I don't know, I'll show you. I'll give you. I'll give you guys a little something inside my life. Hold on. <laughs> this is what I like to call the equivalent of my Woody doll. This is my Ariel doll that I got in 1989 um, when they were just making dolls with the company called Applause. I got her the opening day of Little Mermaid when I saw her. You can tell I play with her everywhere. <laughs> she went with me everywhere and she still continues to be with me everywhere even though I'm, I'm a lot older now. <laughs> A lot older. Um, so Ariel is possibly one of my favorites and uh, I love being in her look. Uh, the wig was styled by me. I'm very 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 happy with it. The bang was extremely uh, difficult to do but with patience and time it worked out. The hair flower is actually by Lisa Fabio again at Little Penny Lane. Um, you can also make sea stars. I made my own sea star, but you can also get your own sea stars from a place on Etsy called si the Sirens Grotto or Sirens Grotto. They're beautifully made. Uh, you can also get wigs there too if you don't want to do your own aerial wig. And uh, I went to the D23 Expo, and I actually wore this, but I wore like a more of a teal straight suit dress and I actually met the directors of Little Mermaid and they were wonderfully sweet and signed a thing for me saying calling me Ariel which probably made my life <laughs> but I hope this tutorial was fun for you thanks for staying around for almost 30 minutes oh my goodness I'm so sorry Fast forward through the whole thing. Don't listen to me here. I'm rambling. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions about this, please, please ask. And I will work really hard at getting the bell one done for you all. And I hope you're having a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you soon. Bye.